Hi, I'm Phil from Delphi. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking you through the differences between standard AC compressors and AC compressors for electric vehicles. We'll also be giving you a few tips and tricks on what to do when servicing these vehicles. Straight in first to a compressor from an ICE vehicle. Now ICE stands for internal combustion engine. If you're a seasoned technician like myself, you may remember ICE actually being in car entertainment, so don't get the two confused. So onto our internal combustion engine AC compressor. What are the big differences between the modern electric vehicle compressor? Well, for starters, the standard compressor is of course belt driven, as you can see here. The belt goes around the crankshaft, spins the compressor, and that's what compresses the gas with inside the AC system. When we go to electric vehicle compressors, what we find is that now they are not belt driven, they are driven electrically from the high voltage system. This particular one here has a three phase input. This one here only has a single phase input and most likely will do a three phase conversion with inside the electrical internals of this particular compressor. So why did we move from a standard belt driven compressor to an EV compressor? Well, it's all about control. Of course, this compressor could be fitted to not just electric vehicles, but also hybrids and plug-in hybrids. In a hybrid or plug-in hybrid, when the engine stops, we want the ability to keep the compressor going. And really the best way of doing that is to move it over to the high voltage side. It's also given us the ability to use the AC compressor to actually heat the interior of the car. This system is called a heat pump. Now you may be familiar of hearing this on houses. It's a relatively new technology, but for heat pumps on vehicles, they've now been going for a few years. It takes the wasted energy created during compression of the gas in the AC system, and we turn that into heat to be able to heat the cabin. Before we had heat pumps on electric vehicles, we would have had electric resistive heating. That would have just simply been like your electric fire at home. We have an electric wire that we run current through, it heats up and we blow air over it. It's quite possible to have both of them, actually both on EVs and combustion engines. I remember seeing the one on the first Golf where it was a Golf diesel, and it had the standard coolant heater matrix, but also had a resistive heater just to try and heat things up a little bit quicker. The same is true for EVs, but honestly, the majority of vehicles now, they're switching over to heat pump because it's much more efficient and it increases the range. So what have you got to look out for when you're servicing vehicles with these types of compressors fitted? Well, the biggest thing, whether you're replacing the gas only or replacing the entire compressor, is to make sure you're using the correct oil. You see, a compressor like this will have probably had standard PAG oil fitted to it, but these sort of compressors require a special oil that it has low conductivity, or sometimes they're called low moisture content. If you don't use this kind of oil when replacing these and you're refilling them up, you will most likely cause a short within the phases, which will lead to a high voltage error on that vehicle. So it's really simple. When you're doing a gas replacement, whether that's recover and refill, just as a matter of course, or you're doing it following an AC component replacement, make sure you're using the correct oil. Always look it up in the technical data and you're looking for that low water content, low conductive oil. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more videos, then why not follow us on social media or visit the Masters of Motion online hub. Or for more expert-led courses, Check us out at the Delphi Academy. See you next time.